In the vast landscape of personal development and financial success, one recurring theme echoes loudly. The indispensable role of personal discipline in the pursuit of wealth. While the idea of getting rich may conjure images of overnight success or strokes of luck, the truth is that lasting wealth is built on a foundation of disciplined action. The journey to financial abundance begins with a commitment to self-mastery. From setting clear financial goals to creating a budget and sticking to it, disciplined individuals understand the importance of consistency and self-control in managing their finances. They prioritize saving and investing over instant gratification, recognizing that delayed gratification is the hallmark of financial success. Moreover, personal discipline extends beyond just financial habits. It encompasses all aspects of life, including health, relationships, and personal growth. Disciplined individuals prioritize self-care and well-being, knowing that a healthy body and mind are essential for sustained success. They invest in continuous learning and self-improvement, seeking out opportunities for growth and development in every area of life. While the path to wealth may not always be easy, disciplined action paves the way for enduring prosperity and fulfillment. So, if you're ready to embark on the journey to financial abundance, remember this. Getting rich is easy when you master the art of personal discipline. Now let me share with you what has been discovered by interviewing self-made millionaires. Self-made millionaires look for something positive in every failure. They say, there must be something good in this that I can benefit from. And surprise, surprise, they always find it. Secondly, self-made millionaires always look for the valuable lesson in every setback, obstacle, or temporary failure, and they always find the lesson. What do failures do? They complain, cry, and dwell on what they've lost, blaming others for their problems. Successful people say, what can I learn from this that will make me smarter next time? And I promise you, those who seek, find. If you look for a valuable lesson in the biggest problem you're facing today, you'll always find the lesson. Here's another possibility. Your biggest problem today could be the greatest gift you've ever received, as it may contain the lesson that will make you successful. If you stop thinking about what happened and who's to blame and start looking for the gift within your problem, it can sometimes transform your life. The next key is to dedicate yourself to continuous learning. What takes you from nothing to wealth is personal development and professional development. As Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys of the 20th century, and the only relevant skill in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills, because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid pace. Stephen says that your current knowledge base has a half-life of two years, meaning half of what you know will be irrelevant in two years, and two years later, another half. So, if you're not constantly learning and improving your knowledge and skills, you're not standing still. As Pat Riley, the basketball coach, says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. Here are the three keys to continuous learning. First, read in your field for 30 to 60 minutes every day. In other words, turn off the TV, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. The best places to read, by the way, are books written by the most successful people in your field, because books contain a wealth of knowledge that will allow you to operate at a much higher level and achieve much better results than you could before. So, read for 30 to 60 minutes a day. I've had people tell me countless times over the years that reading an hour a day has doubled and tripled their income in a year. Second, take every course you can in your field. The courses and seminars available to you in your field, taught by professionals, have been developed for years and years, and have been tested over and over again the person speaking to you for several hours have been spent learning their subject tested with thousands of other people when you take a course you can learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years or even a lifetime all distilled and gathered people say they can't afford a course but you can't afford not to buy books you can't afford not to go to courses a few years ago a very successful dentist recommended by a friend retired at 53 just before retiring, he sold his practice for about $2 million. Before retiring, he said to me, about eight years ago, I attended a dental congress in Hong Kong. He flew from California to Hong Kong to attend this international dental congress, because there were specialists giving private lectures sort of plenary sessions. He attended a session on a unique aesthetic surgery technique at a dental conference. This technique, developed by another dentist, allowed for the straightening of a person's entire front jaw, to enhance its appearance at a remarkably low cost, 
and with exceptional effectiveness. Upon learning about this groundbreaking technique, the dentist wasted no time in implementing it into his practice. Soon, people from far and wide began flocking to him, traveling hundreds of miles just to benefit from this revolutionary procedure. His reputation soared, and soon enough, every dentist in the area was referring their patients to him. With demand skyrocketing, the dentist found himself in a position to set his prices as he saw fit. Before long, he was charging a premium for his services, and his practice became synonymous with excellence in aesthetic dentistry. Fast forward eight years, and this dentist, now in his early fifties, made the decision to retire as a self-made millionaire. Thanks to the knowledge he acquired from that single session at the conference, he had transformed his career, his financial situation, and his life. Now you might think this story is an exception, but it serves as a powerful reminder that opportunities can present themselves in unexpected ways. You never know when a piece of information or a chance encounter could change the trajectory of your life forever. So, stay open to learning, be proactive in seeking out new knowledge, and always be ready to seize the opportunities that come your way. Who knows, the next life-changing idea could be just around the corner. The third way to improve your skills is to listen to audio programs in your car. The average driver spends 500 to 1,000 hours a year covering 25 to 50,000 miles, according to the University of Southern California. If you listen to audio programs in your car, you'll get the equivalent of almost attending college full-time just by listening to learning material while driving. It can completely and profoundly change your life. Very importantly, here's an interesting point. The more you commit to being the best person you can be, the more you like and respect yourself. The more energy you have, the bigger goals you set. The more you persist. When you invest in yourself and read, learn, and improve your skills, you're telling yourself, Wow, I'm a person with a great future, and it's up to me to maximize my potential. Your self-esteem goes up, your self-respect increases, your sense of personal pride rises, and you start to earn more in all areas of your life. Surround yourself with the right people. This is a key to becoming a self-made millionaire. Dr. David McLand at Harvard conducted studies for 25 years to understand why some people are highly successful in life. What he found was that the key to completely transforming the way you think is to change the group of people you surround yourself with. We're like chameleons, absorbing through our skin the attitudes, opinions, behaviors, dress styles, and ways of speaking of the people we associate with most of the time. If you start to associate mainly with winners, you'll notice they have a completely different outlook. They're positive, optimistic, focused, always learning, growing, and confident in what they do. And amazingly, you start to adopt those characteristics. Another key is to be prepared to go from peak to peak. Life is not a continuous train, it always has ups and downs, like climbing and descending a mountain. Everything in life is cycles and trends. There are upward and downward cycles and trends. The question is, what is the general direction of your trend? Life involves two steps forward and one step back. Successful people focus on the two steps forward and cushion the fall so that every time they step back, they're still further ahead than they were before. Another important aspect is to develop resilience and bounce back ability. This skill is crucial for self-made millionaires, as most things won't work out as expected. You'll face setbacks over and over again and the key is to bounce back instead of breaking down. Learn to apply the mental rehearsal technique. Mentally prepare for adversity before it happens. Decide not to be upset, angry, or frustrated when something goes wrong. Learn from it, get up, and move on. Remember that facing problems is a constant part of life. The key is not to avoid problems, but to be proactive in seeking solutions. Superior people, according to 30 years of research, excel in how they respond to crises and handle problems. They don't allow problems to affect them emotionally, but intensely focus on finding solutions. One last important piece of advice. Take your main goal and turn it into a clear question. For example, if your goal is to double your income, ask yourself, what can I do to double my income in the next 12 months? Then write down at least 20 answers. This exercise, called mindstorming or the 20 ideas method, has transformed the lives of many people and led to the creation of millionaires. Once you have your answers, choose one and act on it immediately. This will keep you thinking and acting creatively all day long. Another key element to becoming a self-made millionaire is to adopt unwavering optimism. 
Optimists possess a unique outlook on life. They consistently focus on what they desire, seeking the silver lining in every situation, and eagerly embracing valuable lessons along the way. Their minds are like sponges, constantly absorbing great ideas that broaden their horizons and open up new possibilities. It's this unwavering optimism that propels them to learn more, explore new avenues, and persevere in the face of adversity. Maintaining a steadfast focus on your goals and cultivating an attitude of unwavering optimism is key to navigating the path to success. Decide unequivocally that once you've set your sights on achieving wealth, nothing will deter you from reaching that goal. Understand that setbacks and challenges are inevitable on this journey. Like a determined football player maneuvering down the field, you may encounter obstacles, gifs, and setbacks, but your eyes remain fixed on the ultimate prize. Now let's explore two critical qualities exhibited by self-made millionaires. Courage and persistence. Fear of failure often stands as the biggest barrier to success. However, courage serves as the antidote to this fear. To succeed, you need two types of courage. The courage to take that initial leap into the unknown, and the courage to persevere despite setbacks. The first requires you to dive in without the safety net of guarantees, embracing action and learning along the way. The second type of courage is the determination to keep moving forward, no matter how many times you may stumble or fall. Decide in advance that giving up is not an option for you. Make a commitment to yourself that regardless of the challenges you face, you will never waver in your pursuit of success. Interestingly, when you firmly establish this mindset, you'll find yourself resiliently bouncing back from setbacks time and time again. With courage and persistence as your guiding lights, you'll navigate the twists and turns of your journey with unwavering resolve ultimately emerging victorious in your quest for wealth and success. Personal discipline is the master key to wealth. It's the ability to make yourself do what you should do when you should do it, regardless of how you feel. Self-discipline is the quality that will make you a great success. It's the ability to force yourself to do what you know you should do. Persistence is self-discipline in action. Every time you persist, you build your self-discipline. Every time you practice self-discipline, you build your ability to persist. Both are linked to your self-esteem. The more you persist, the more you like yourself. And the more you like yourself, the more discipline you have. And the more discipline you practice, the more you like yourself. As a result, you persist more until you reach a higher spiral where you become absolutely unstoppable. You reach the point where you know you can achieve the goal and nothing in the world can stop you. Every step you take forward makes you stronger and stronger until finally people say one thing about him or her. You can't stop him or her. Once they've decided they want something, they won't stop until they get it. In these last points, we are living in the greatest time in all of human history. More people are going to make more money in the next few years than has been made in all of human history. More people will become millionaires and are becoming millionaires today at a faster rate than we ever thought possible. And no one is better than you, and no one is smarter than you. If you do what other self-made millionaires do, then nothing in the world can eventually stop you from achieving the same results as other self-made millionaires. A beautiful line I read not long ago says, The best way to predict the future is to create it, which means having a vision. And though the vision may be in the air or in the sky, build a foundation under your dreams. When you see men and women emerging from poverty and darkness to fame and renown, invariably, you see someone who had a vision of what they could be, have and do, that was far beyond what they were. Ben Trago, the strategic thinker, said, The worst thing in the world is to efficiently do what doesn't need to be done at all. Many of us work very hard to efficiently do what doesn't need to be done at all. Anyone who has had employees will tell you that every day, you find your employees doing something very diligently, but is completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself in your work life. What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs am I supposed to generate in my work? The second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? What results are expected of me? The results expected of us in sales are sales, and the only time we are working is when we are doing something that directly contributes to that result. But why do we do other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason we do other things is because they are fun and easy, rather than being difficult and necessary. I think the main reason people fail in life is due to the convenience factor, that we always do, 
and always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do it because it's something comfortable and easy today, instead of what's difficult and necessary. And then we have to do what's difficult and necessary at the end of our lives when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself, to be clear about what you want, to be clear about where you're heading, to be clear about the results expected of you to achieve, and then just work on those results, the ability to discipline yourself to do so is absolutely crucial for success. It's impossible to conceive of a successful person who isn't able to discipline themselves to do what's difficult and necessary instead of what's fun and easy. And especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to seeing what you should do day by day, focus on the results, not the activities. Now let me give you a method that has helped me. Write down your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have them written down, then they're really not goals at all. They're just wishes. And as they say, a wish is just a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them down very specifically and clearly. And then do this every morning. Rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as if they already exist. Rewrite your major goals every morning. This should take you about two to five minutes. You can do it all in one paragraph. For example, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every morning write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to excel in real estate, write, I am an excellent seller in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain type of life, write your major goals in the first person singular as if they already exist. Do this every morning. And then every evening take about 5 or 10 minutes instead of watching TV. Just before you turn it on, say, Wait a second, I have to check my progress. Sit down and review what you've done during the day. Ask yourself, what have I done well today that has brought me closer to my goals? And the second question is, what would I do differently if I had to live today again? Those four steps, writing and rewriting your goals every morning, reviewing them at night, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do well that brought me closer to my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live again? If you ask yourself those two questions over the next 30 days, you'll achieve more than you've achieved in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've seen. I learned it a few years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them, and we don't set them high enough. You can have everything you want. Whatever you want, imagine you can have everything you want. Anything you can keep in your mind continuously. You can have it. Anything you're crystal clear about wanting and willing to pay the price to get it, you can have it. So clarity is the key. Have clarity about what you want. Have clarity about what you have to do to get it. Have clarity about your vision. Speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity. And that's the final point regarding clarity. In conclusion, remember that getting rich is not about luck or chance. It's about personal discipline and deliberate action. By mastering the art of discipline, you hold the key to unlocking the doors of wealth and abundance. It's a journey that requires dedication. Imagine standing in front of a mirror. What you see reflects who you are at this very moment. Now think deeper, beyond the surface, and consider who you could become. This reflection is not merely physical. It embodies your dreams, aspirations, and the untapped potential within you. It's about the ongoing dialogue between your present self and your potential self encapsulating the essence of the battle within. Each day we face choices that either affirm our current state or nudge us toward the person we aspire to be. It's a profound internal struggle that dictates the course of our lives. Yet how often do we pause to reflect on this? How frequently do we take a step back to evaluate the direction in which we are heading or whether we are true to our deepest ambitions? The importance of self-improvement cannot be overstated. It is not merely about acquiring new skills or expanding our knowledge base. It is about transforming our character and enhancing our lives in a meaningful way. It's about bridging the gap between where we stand today and where we see ourselves in the future. Yes, this journey is fraught with challenges and setbacks, but it is also filled with immense possibilities and opportunities for growth. This journey of self-improvement starts with internal reflection. It requires us to ask ourselves some tough questions. Are we content with where we are? Are we moving in the direction that leads to fulfillment and success? This introspection is not a one-time test, but a continuous process essential for growth. 
It's about being honest with oneself about shortcomings and missteps, and equally about recognizing and celebrating our strengths and victories. Remember, this battle is not fought on distant shores. It is waged in the corridors of our minds, in the choices we make every day, and in the way we perceive ourselves and our capabilities. This isn't just about self-improvement. It's about self-transformation. It's a journey that demands persistence, resilience, and an enduring commitment to our goals. Let us then step forward with a clear vision of who we are, and a vibrant hope for who we can be. This path is not easy. It is strewn with the temptation to remain within the comfort of the familiar. Yet the rewards of pushing through, of truly battling against our present limitations, are profound and life-altering. Let us carry with us the understanding that every step taken in self-awareness and improvement is a stepping stone towards realizing our fullest potential. Understanding the current version of ourselves becomes not just beneficial, but crucial. This understanding begins with self-awareness, which is the bedrock of personal growth and self-improvement. It is about being acutely aware of our thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and behaviors. Self-awareness allows us to understand why we do what we do, the triggers behind our behaviors, and the emotions that drive our decisions. While self-awareness is the starting point, it is the common traits that often hold us back which need our attention. Traits such as fear, complacency, and negative self-talk are not just hurdles. They are the chains that bind us to our current state, preventing us from moving toward that greater version of ourselves. Overcoming these limitations begins with changing our internal narratives and involves stepping out of comfort zones, facing our fears, and replacing self-doubt with self-affirmation. As we reflect on the transformative power of personal growth, let us remember that each step toward understanding and improving our current selves lays the groundwork for the next. It's about setting the stage for personal growth and preparing ourselves for the journey ahead. Let's carry this understanding forward, recognizing that while the path may be fraught with challenges, it is also ripe with opportunity. These are not merely abstract ideals, but practical steps that we can apply to make significant changes in our lives. First, let us delve into the fundamental aspect of continuous learning. The world around us is ever-evolving, and to keep pace, we must foster a mindset of perpetual learning. This means not only expanding our knowledge in areas of professional expertise, but also broadening our understanding of the world. Continuous learning involves reading extensively, attending workshops, seminars and conferences, and seeking feedback from mentors and peers. It is about being curious and inquisitive, always questioning and seeking to understand more deeply. Consider the story of Michael, a manager in a technology firm. Michael dedicated at least an hour each day to reading industry publications, books on leadership, and attending online courses. This habit did not just keep him updated with the latest trends, but it also equipped him with innovative strategies to enhance his team's performance. Michael's commitment to learning turned him into a respected leader, admired by his colleagues, and sought after by other companies. Alongside continuous learning, the formation of good habits plays a critical role in personal development. Habits are the building blocks of our daily lives. Positive habits such as planning your day, exercising regularly, or dedicating time for reflection can significantly enhance productivity and well-being. The key is consistency. When we repeat an action enough times, it becomes a part of us, embedded in our daily routines. To illustrate, let's look at Emma, who struggled with time management. By implementing a simple habit of reviewing her tasks each morning and prioritizing them, she found herself more organized and less stressed. Over time, this habit of planning her day every morning helped Emma become more efficient and proactive in her tasks, allowing her to take on higher responsibilities. Persistence is another cornerstone of self-improvement. The path to achieving our goals is rarely smooth. It is fraught with challenges and setbacks. Persistence is what keeps us going despite these hurdles. It's about maintaining our efforts and commitment, even when the results are not immediately visible. Persistence means pushing forward one step at a time, keeping our eyes on the goal even when the road gets tough. Resilience and adaptability go hand in hand with persistence. Life is unpredictable. Changes and challenges, whether personal, professional, or global, require us to be resilient and adaptable. Resilience is our ability to bounce back from setbacks, to learn from failures rather than be crushed by them. Adaptability is about adjusting our strategies and approaches in response to changing circumstances. Together these qualities ensure that when faced with a roadblock, 
We find a way around it or sometimes a new and better path. Sarah, an entrepreneur, experienced a significant business failure. However, instead of giving up, she used the experience as a learning opportunity. She adapted her business model, addressed the shortcomings, and relaunched her business with a new strategy that eventually led to greater success. Sarah's story is a testament to the power of resilience and adaptability. Furthermore, building a network of supportive relationships can enhance our resilience. These relationships provide not only emotional support, but also diverse perspectives that can help us adapt and thrive amidst challenges. Engaging with a community of like-minded individuals creates an environment where we can share knowledge, learn from others' experiences, and support each other in our growth journeys. Remember that the journey of self-improvement is ongoing. There is no final destination, as each goal achieved sets the stage for the next challenge. Our learning never stops. Our habits continuously evolve. Our persistence is constantly tested. And our resilience and adaptability are forever crucial. Each of these steps is interlinked, supporting and enhancing the others. As we progress, these practices become deeply ingrained in our very being, propelling us toward not just achieving our goals, but living a more fulfilled and meaningful life. Now let us turn our attention to how we can overcome internal obstacles that often impede our progress. Understanding these barriers is crucial as we continue our path to personal development and achieving our fullest potential. In the intricate process of self-improvement, we must acknowledge and address the internal obstacles that often deter us from achieving our true potential. Among these are procrastination, fear of failure, and self-doubt, common challenges that many of us face. Understanding these internal conflicts and adopting strategies to overcome them is essential for personal growth and success. Procrastination, the thief of time, often tricks us into delaying tasks that we find daunting or unpleasant. This delay not only impacts our productivity, but also adds to our stress, creating a vicious cycle that can be hard to break. To combat procrastination, it's crucial to understand its root causes, which often include fear of failure and overwhelming tasks. One effective strategy is the five-minute takeoff, where you commit to engaging in a task for just five minutes. Often starting is the hardest part, and once begun, the work carries its momentum. Another technique is to break larger tasks into smaller, more manageable parts. This makes the task less daunting and gives a sense of accomplishment as each small part is completed. Setting clear deadlines and creating a supportive work environment can also help minimize procrastination. Fear of failure is another significant barrier that holds us back. It stifles innovation and discourages us from taking the risk necessary for growth. Overcoming this fear starts with changing our perspective on failure. Instead of seeing failure as a negative endpoint, we can view it as a stepping stone to success. Each failure offers valuable lessons that can drive our personal and professional growth. One way to manage the fear of failure is through visualization techniques. Envisioning success instead of dwelling on the possibility of failure. Positive affirmations can also reinforce self-belief and counteract the paralyzing effects of fear. Moreover, setting realistic expectations and preparing thoroughly for tasks can reduce anxiety about potential outcomes. Self-doubt, closely linked to the fear of failure, often undermines our confidence and limits our potential. To overcome self-doubt, it is helpful to maintain a record of our successes, no matter how small. This record can serve as a tangible reminder of our capabilities when doubt creeps in. Seeking feedback from trusted mentors or peers can also provide an extra internal perspective, helping us to see our efforts and achievements more clearly. Engaging regularly in activities that strengthen self-efficacy, such as taking on new challenges and learning new skills, can also gradually build confidence and reduce self-doubt. Maintaining a growth mindset, believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work, is key. The stories of individuals who have overcome these internal battles are both inspiring and instructive. Consider the story of Anna, who struggled with severe procrastination and self-doubt during her university years. Despite her intelligence, the fear of not living up to expectations led her to delay her thesis work repeatedly. It was not until she sought the help of a mentor who introduced her to the technique of breaking down tasks and focusing on one small step at a time that she was able to move forward gradually. Anna regained her confidence, completed her thesis with distinction, and went on to a successful career in research. Then there is Mark, a young entrepreneur whose fear of failure nearly prevented him from starting his own business. Haunted by the possibility of losing his investment and disappointing those he cared about, 
Mark was stuck in a state of inaction. However, through attending workshops on resilience and engaging with other entrepreneurs, he learned to see failure as a normal part of the entrepreneurial journey. This shift in mindset allowed him to take the plunge and launch a startup, which turned out to be highly successful. As we reflect on these narratives, let us remember that the journey to overcoming internal obstacles is continuous. Each day offers a new opportunity to confront our fears, challenge our doubts, and move beyond procrastination. By adopting practical strategies and drawing inspiration from those who have triumphed over their internal struggles, we equip ourselves with the tools necessary to forge ahead. This realization empowers us to continue striving toward not only meeting, but exceeding our potential. Now let us look at how maintaining momentum in our efforts and staying committed to our path can help us sustain our growth and achieve long-lasting success. Building on the foundation of overcoming internal obstacles, it becomes crucial to maintain momentum in our personal development journey. Sustaining growth and avoiding regression into less productive habits is a challenge that requires strategic planning and unwavering commitment. As we advance, the techniques and structures we put in place to support our growth play a vital role in ensuring that we stay on track. One effective strategy for maintaining momentum is the establishment of accountability structures. This could involve partnering with accountability partners, mentors, or joining a peer support group. An accountability partner is someone who shares similar goals and with whom you regularly review progress, set future objectives, and discuss challenges. This partnership can be incredibly motivating, making it much harder to fall back into old habits when someone is actively observing your progress and pushing you forward. Mentors, on the other hand, bring wisdom, experience, and often an invaluable network of contacts. They provide guidance, advice, and a broader perspective that can help you navigate challenges more effectively. Their role in your life can be transformative, as they not only encourage you, but also challenge your thinking and decision-making processes, thereby fostering your growth and resilience. For continuous self-assessment, regular reflection on your progress is essential. This might involve weekly reviews of your goals and the strategies you've employed to meet them. Self-assessment helps identify what is working and what is not allowing you to adjust your strategies and stay aligned with your long-term objectives. It encourages a proactive approach to personal development and ensures that your actions continuously resonate with your ultimate goals. Moreover, staying motivated over the long term is often one of the most challenging aspects of personal development. To keep the motivational fire burning, setting clear, measurable, and challenging goals is crucial. These goals should be aligned with your deepest values and interests to ensure they ignite passion and drive within you. Regularly reminding yourself of the reasons behind your goals, the benefits they'll bring, and the progress you've already made can also keep you motivated. Visualizing the outcomes of your success is another powerful motivator. When you can clearly picture achieving your goals, the path to reaching them becomes more tangible and compelling. This visualization should be detailed, including not only the end results, but also the emotions you anticipate feeling once you've achieved your goals. The stories of those who have successfully maintained long-term motivation can also serve as powerful examples. Consider the story of Julia, a graphic designer who aspired to start her own agency. Despite early challenges, she kept her vision clear and regularly revisited her business plan to remind herself of her goals. She set up monthly meetings with a mentor who helped her refine her strategies and introduced her to potential clients. Julia's clear focus on her end goal, supported by her mentor and her own continuous planning and reassessment, eventually led to the successful launch and growth of her business. Another key technique is to celebrate small victories along the way. These celebrations reinforce positive behavior and remind you that success is a journey, not a destination. Each small victory builds your confidence and reaffirms your belief in your ability to achieve your goals. Flexibility and adaptability are also critical. As you grow and evolve, your goals, interests, and circumstances might change. Being open to reassessing and adjusting your goals accordingly ensures that your personal development journey remains relevant and aligned with your changing life context. Lastly, integrating your personal development activities into your daily routine can help make self-improvement a natural part of your life. Whether it's listening to motivational podcasts on your commute, reading in your field every evening, or dedicating time each morning to meditate and plan your day, these activities can enhance your growth without feeling like an additional burden. By incorporating these elements into your life, you ensure that your journey of growth remains steady and directed towards your ultimate vision of success. 
Let us carry forward these strategies as we reflect on the overall journey we've embarked upon. Each step taken, from understanding ourselves to continuously growing and overcoming barriers, builds upon the last, creating a comprehensive path toward personal excellence and fulfillment. Remember that each moment of self-improvement contributes to building a resilient, adaptable, and deeply fulfilled individual capable of achieving extraordinary things. As we near the close of our discussion today, it is vital to reflect on the ground we have covered and the pathways we have charted toward personal growth and self-improvement. We started by understanding the powerful interplay between our current selves and our potential selves, highlighting the importance of self-awareness and the challenges posed by internal conflicts such as fear, procrastination, and self-doubt. We then ventured into the realm of envisioning our best selves, embracing the transformative power of setting realistic yet ambitious goals, and utilizing visualization to see not only what we aspire to become, but also the steps necessary to achieve that vision. By breaking down larger goals into manageable tasks, we pave the way for achievable successes that accumulate, building momentum and reinforcing our journey. We explored the essential strategies for maintaining this momentum through continuous learning, habit formation, and the development of resilience and adaptability. Each of these strategies is crucial for sustained growth, helping us to remain committed to our path even in the face of adversity or changing circumstances. We also discussed the significance of having a support system like accountability partners and mentors, who provide not only guidance and encouragement, but also the necessary feedback that challenges us to keep moving forward. And importantly, we highlighted the need for continuous self-assessment as a tool for introspection and recalibration ensuring that our actions align with our deepest values and long-term objectives. Now, as we stand at the precipice of new beginnings, it is essential to embrace this journey of self-discovery and self-improvement as a continuous evolving process. It is not a destination at which one arrives, but a perpetual path of becoming, becoming better, wiser, more resilient, and more attuned to the possibilities that life offers. Thus, I challenge each of you today. Commit to this journey, commit to taking the first step, then another, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem. Commit to embracing the challenges as opportunities for growth and to viewing setbacks as lessons rather than failures. Engage with your goals daily, nurture your ambitions, strive to exceed your own expectations. Let this commitment begin now, from this moment. Make a pledge to yourself that you will pursue growth every day, that you will remain steadfast in the face of challenges, and that you will celebrate every small victory along the way. Write down your goals, speak them aloud, share them with a mentor, and revisit them often. Remember that the quality of your journey is determined not just by the goals you achieve, but by the lessons learned and the character built along the way. Each step forward, each obstacle overcome enriches your story and deepens your resilience. So, let us move forward with courage, with determination, and with an unwavering belief in our potential. Let us not only dream about a better future, but actively create it, starting today. Let this be not just a call to action, but a call to becoming the best version of ourselves. Embrace this journey, for it is truly the most rewarding journey you will ever undertake. Thank you. The greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. These words from Confucius encapsulate one of life's most empowering truths. We are imperfect beings, flawed, fallible, and destined to stumble from time to time. But our missteps, our moments of failure and adversity, can either break us or make us stronger. The choice is ours. Will we stay stuck in the mire of defeat and self-pity, or will we find the inner fortitude to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep chasing our dreams with every fiber of our being? I stand before you today as a man intimately acquainted with failure. Over the decades of striving towards my loftiest ambitions, I have fallen more times than I can count. Crushing setbacks, humiliating losses, soul-shaking crises that brought me to the brink of utter ruin. There were moments when the pain felt so immense, so overwhelming, that the little voice of doubt whispered, This is too hard. Give up. In those darkest moments of despair, I was forced to either surrender to the darkness, or light an inner fire so bright it incinerated my fears. Time after time, face bloodied but unbowed, I chose to keep fighting, to embrace the wisdom buried in those words from the great sage Confucius. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, 
but in rising every time we fall. Falls are inevitable on the path to any dream worth achieving. Obstacles litter the road like boulders waiting to trip us up or block our way entirely. Those who fixate on somehow avoiding every pitfall are inevitably defeated by the first roadblock they encounter. But those who accept that falls will come, that some level of failure is unavoidable, those are the ones who forge the resilience required to ultimately triumph. The path I walked to get here was not a straight line, more like a winding tangled uphill mess of switchbacks and dead ends, stumbling through mazes and falling into deep chasms over and over again. But the setbacks themselves were not what defined me. It was whether I lay there, clinging to self-pity and resignation, or drew from a bottomless well of persistence to stand back up, scarred but wiser, time and again. I want to share the lowest of the low points in that journey so you can hear the depths from which I clawed my way back. It was the early 90s, and I was a young man of 24, overflowing with big dreams but painfully light on funds, wisdom, and experience. I had struck out on my own to start a business, and within two years, it had collapsed in a smoldering heap all around me. I was over $200,000 in debt. Bankruptcy loomed like an eclipse, blotting out my future. I remember evenings where I couldn't even afford a modest dinner, having to survive those nights on nothing but tap water and a stale rice cake or two. But the true rock bottom came when I could no longer pay the utility bills. There I was, the grown man who had once dreamed of conquering the world, now having to sneak into filthy gas station bathrooms just to take a shower, crouching in the two small sinks as I huddled shivering on those grimy bathroom tiles, streams of metallic tap water dripping down my face. The cosmic chasm between my life's ambitions and current reality felt so vast, so cruel, infinite, that resignation seemed like the only rational posture left. A quiet voice did whisper in that moment, This is too hard, too far to claw back from. You'll never make it. But then, a deeper roar came thundering up from somewhere primal inside me. Like hell you'll give up. You've been blessed with a relentless work ethic. A razor-sharp mind that can analyze and solve any problem. The grit and creative drive to forge your own way out of any chaos. Have you fallen into a pit? Good. Use this as your catalyst to fight harder than you ever have in your life. Which voice do you think I listen to? You're damn right. I chose to fight. Spent months working insane hours at whatever odd jobs or side hustles to start digging my way out of that inescapable debt pit. When I finally landed a decent sales job, I used it as a launching pad to rebuild. With the focus, resilience, and skills minted in that bathroom floor crucible of failure, I rapidly built up a six-figure income stream. But of course, balls kept coming. At every stage of pursuing my grandest ambitions, I got arrogant and overconfident based on those first rebuilt successes made ill-advised bets and investments that led to another catastrophic crash and plunge into seven-figure debt. Felt that sickening vertigo of freefall all over again, watching everything I'd clawed my way towards go swirling down the drain. Then, an achingly personal blow. A horrible business deal with a partner I trusted blew up in my face. He deceitfully undermined me and wrecked not just the financial prospects of that venture, but shredded my reputation and credibility in the industry. For the second time in my thirties, I found myself bankrupt in every sense of the word, destitute financially, but also emotionally and professionally. Another bout of despair, crouched in those gas station showers, wondering if this was finally the setback too far, the obstacle too big to overcome. But you see by then, the vital pattern had been etched into the core of my being, branded like an uplifting mantra. Falls are inevitable. Giving up is unforgivable. Failure is a temporary condition unless you accept it as permanent. I had seen the depths, heard the darkest whispers enticing me into resignation. But I had also watched that inner voice of determination drag me back into the light, again and again. As devastating as those crashes felt in the moment, I now recognize them for what they truly were. Mere obstacles to be overcome by doubling my effort and forging unstoppable persistence. Every hardship was a reforging of my character compounding my hunger for victory while sharpening my mind into an analytical Swiss army knife that could solve any problem. And when I did eventually break through to achieve my ultimate vision of multidimensional success, mastering not just financial prosperity, but fulfillment in every important life sphere, it was incomparably sweet. Because in my mind's eye, I could replay the entire epic struggle that paved those footsteps.
I could look back at the trail of blood, sweat, and tears, and know that every drop of that physical, mental, and emotional investment was the price required to earn those final summits. Our greatest glory, our most heroic triumphs, belong not to those who somehow glided effortlessly from success to success, without ever experiencing failure or adversity. True glory belongs to those who fell into the abyss and chose to keep rising upwards towards the light, heeding that ancient wisdom of Confucius with every arduous step back to their feet, understanding that their path would always be strewn with obstacles to stumble upon. It is one thing to boldly chase a dream and fall, we all stumble and struggle at times, that is the mere human condition. But it is another thing entirely to embrace those failures as stepping stones instead of stopping points, to transmute each setback into fuel for your hunger, to wield every humbling fall as a lesson in cultivating more tenacity, more hunger, more intense clarity about refining your approach. That uphill battle of tumbling and recovering, stumbling and rising, that is the epic struggle that separates the dreamers from those who are destined to live those dreams. And I've been that climbing soul, having fallen more times than I care to admit on the path to actualizing my most cherished ambitions. I vividly remember moments of agony, shrouded in seeming hopelessness, drowning in scarcity and crushing failure. But what I hold closest to my heart is the memory of the voice that always roared back louder than any whispers of resignation. Get up. This is not how your story will end. You were born to conquer adversity and shatter all ceilings placed on what you can achieve. Every fall is a lesson, every failure a stepping stone toward your greatest successes yet to come. So rise up, hungrier and wiser, then keep ascending towards those summits that are calling your name. This voice was not just a refrain for me. It is the battle cry for all humans striving towards their greatest potential, no matter what lofty goals they pursue. Whether your Everest is building a business, mastering an art form, making a difference in the lives of others, or any worthy pursuit, the pattern repeats. Adversity strikes. You fall. The world seems set against you. But in that crucial crucible moment, one voice will whisper, give up, while another roars, never. We've all faced that crossroads. We all know the siren song of defeat pulling us towards resignation. But we also know the rumble of that deeper determination, the refusal to stay stuck or settle for anything less than every last effort. At our core, we are all climbing souls, destined to ascend in the face of adversity, souls born for an uphill battle strewn with falls and failures, that we must gather the courage to transcend. That is why we fall, to build the character required for achieving true greatness, to force us to choose our path again and again and again. Will we crumble under the weight of our broken dreams and surrender? Or will we stand back up with that wondrous indomitable human spirit and keep climbing, no matter what? Those are the choices we must make every time adversity strikes us down. I know the path I have chosen, time and time again. When faced with the biggest falls, I have risen up fiercer, hungrier, more obsessed with scaling those loftiest summits than ever before. The more I fell, the more it galvanized me. From every failure, I forged more resilience. From every setback, I refined my strategies and sharpened my execution. The depths I traversed simply burned away my remaining weakness, leaving nothing but tenacity and hunger behind. And now, finally having reached so many of my loftiest goals, and ascended so many magnificent life summits, I understand that these achievements are not despite my countless falls, but because of them. Each setback was an opportunity to become stronger, wiser, more relentless, and more resourceful. And I realized this is the core philosophy required to manifest any dream, no matter how grand. In the face of inevitable obstacles, so when you find yourself face down in the mud after another punishing fall from grace, first, give yourself permission to feel the pain, to let the anger and despair breathe for a while. Wallow if you need to, because that rising back up after a brutal fall, that's one of the hardest damn things you'll ever do as a human being. It requires feeling the full scope of your suffering, so you can alchemize it into your motivation. But then, once you've spent that appropriate time being human in all your hurt and anguish, you must throw off those shackles of resignation whispering for you to stay stuck. Instead, stoke your inner fire with the eternal flames of determination. Tell yourself, this is not how my story will end. I was born to conquer adversity and keep scaling the heights of my dreams. Because the only way to achieve true greatness in any endeavor is to embrace the endless climb. Falls are inevitable, 
and our glory is never found in avoiding those inevitable obstacles and tumbles littering life's most rewarding path. Our glory lives in rising up every time we fall. That refusal to ever stay down for the count, no matter how hard the blows or bear in the straits we face. Our glory shines in those transcendent moments we dust off our bloody knees and bellow, not for the last time or the first time, but just the next time. I am not done yet. I will keep rising higher. Those who master the mindset are the ones who see their visions through to the end. No matter how many times they taste bitter failure in pursuit of their ultimate dream. Those iron-willed joy-climbing souls who never stayed stuck on the ground after falling, but kept finding the power to rise again and keep scaling upward with insatiable hunger, those are the ones who manifest that elusive glory that only reveals itself on life's grandest peaks. So, let that truth become your new philosophy for overcoming adversity. Then nothing can stop you from ascending towards any summit that summons your heart and soul to its heights. I wish I could tell you that the path gets easier after picking yourself up from those lowest of low points, that eventually, the falls stop coming, and you reach some plateau of perpetual smooth sailing. But that would be a lie. The damaging untruth that robs you of embracing one of life's greatest catalysts. Growth. The reality is that no matter how high you climb, how many peaks you conquer, there will always be new precipices ahead, where the potential for a devastating fall awaits. It is one of the fundamental truths of the human experience, that we are always pushing towards new frontiers, new ceilings to transcend. And with each new summit we attain, the stakes get higher, and the inevitable falls more brutal. That is part of why they are so critical to our perpetual growth and progress. If we never fell again after our first couple of victories, we would grow complacent and stagnate. Without the emotional and psychological forging that comes through recovering from a devastating fall, we would be ill-equipped for those future, more daunting climbs. We'd remain too coddled by transient success. Failure actually becomes the lotus star that keeps resetting our equilibrium and reminding us of the hustle required to ascend. Those humbling, even humiliating falls are what burn away our remaining hubris and weaknesses. They pummel us, but leave behind hardened focus and grit. A cleared mind unencumbered by ego or false beliefs about how high we've already climbed on life's numberless peaks. In many ways, our falls are what continue fertilizing the seeds of hunger, determination, and resourcefulness required to keep vaulting upwards through each new set of inevitable barriers. I've experienced this myself more times than I can count. Periods where I reached a new plane of success, settled into a fleeting comfort, only to soon suffer a rude reawakening about how much further I still had left to climb. After climbing my way up from that first punishing fall into bankruptcy in my 20s, eventually rebuilding my wealth and quality of life to greater heights than before, another meteoric rise was followed by an even more disastrous plummet into ruin. This time, it wasn't just a failed business leading to debt and scrape bottom. It involved much higher stakes. A betrayal by a trusted mentor and business partner that left me in multi-million dollar legal battles, fighting to protect my reputation and everything I'd built over decades of ceaseless hustling. It crushed me emotionally and mentally, leaving wounds that lasted years and nearly shattered my confidence permanently. In those tortuous days, as I battled depressive episodes and saw hallmarks of my hard-earned legacy crumbling, that old familiar voice tried to creep back in, whispering lies of defeat and resignation. Part of me internalized beliefs that maybe I'd climbed as high as my abilities would allow. Maybe I wasn't cut out for the boundless vision I'd carried all those years of relentlessly chasing dreams. The higher you rise, the more it stings to plummet back towards the earth. But that's when the soul-saving wisdom of those past falls resurfaced back into my consciousness. This is merely another test, not a stopping point, a harrowing ordeal to be sure, but one that would ultimately reforge me into an elevated version of myself. Darper, wiser, more versatile in confronting whatever obstacles loomed ahead. Every fallen reckoning throughout our lives is a chance to slough off whatever self-limiting beliefs or coping mechanisms we've subconsciously accumulated. An opportunity to reset with a cleaner slate and get back to climbing with even more hunger and intensity. So, even with stakes that felt higher than ever before, I did what I'd been practicing since those first bathrooms of rock bottom. I started solving problems with maniacal discipline, addressing each issue systematically to secure my future while still waging the legal battles. I focused solely on working towards the next rung of ascent, rather than fixating on wounded prior self-pity. I allowed myself to feel the sting and doubt for moments, 
then refocus that pain into determined hunger. Most importantly, I radiated faith that this was not the ceiling of my capabilities. That voice of self-belief whispering, this fall is not the end, but another beginning. You were born for grander tests of ascendancy. Use this as fuel for rising higher than ever before. And rise I did. Like a boxer who tasted the canvas yet again. I climbed back to my feet, round after round, undeterred by sweat or blood, never underestimating the remaining fight required. Eventually, the breakthrough periods of upward mobility resumed, though never devoid of further stomach-punching setbacks and course corrections. Indeed, the cycle became almost comforting in its familiarity. For I remembered, the truest essence of glory does not live in perpetual triumph. True glory emerges from those transcendent moments. Those moments of clarity and courage when you rise up defiantly after being knocked down. When you refuse to stay down, no matter how hard the blows are bare in the straits you face. So I say to you, when you stumble and fall, as inevitably you will, which voice will you heed? Will you listen to doubt and surrender? Or will you tune into that primal fiery spirit inside that refuses to stay down permanently? The choice is yours. But I can speak from the deepest wisdom woven into the fabric of my falls and rebirths over a lifetime. Your greatest glory is reserved for those moments when you rise up defiant yet again. To keep hungering, climbing, and conquering. Let that truth become your guiding light, your north star, as you navigate the treacherous terrain of life's grandest challenges. For it is in those moments of struggle, in those moments of adversity, that the true measure of your character is revealed. And it is in those moments, when you rise up with unwavering determination, that you become truly unstoppable, truly invincible. So rise up, my friend. Rise up and claim your destiny, for the world awaits the greatness that lies within you. Where we stand up more determined than ever before, no matter how many times the universe tries to knock us flat on our asses. So, when you find yourself on that lonely bathroom tile, gazing into the dark mirror of abject failure, wondering if this is a fall too far, rest assured, it is not your expiration date, but a temporary rebirth into a wiser, hardier version of the unstoppable force within you. The depths you traverse simply burn away the final wisps of doubt and self-imposed limitations cloaking your potential for greatness. What remains is the unbreakable kernel of belief that you were born for endless ascension. The greatest dreams, the most hallowed personal pinnacles, can never be reached through an uninterrupted trajectory of flawless advances. To manifest destiny at that level requires an epic story of rising and falling, of finding never-ending reservoirs of resilience and tenacity. Each time you get knocked towards the canvas, you will fall repeatedly throughout that quest, each plummet feeling more agonizingly consequential than the last. But you will also rediscover why those rebirths are far from the end. They are gateways to unleashing fresh versions of yourself, calibrated for even grander climbs ahead. So walk unafraid, even towards those cliffs where failures await to shove you earthward once again. Embrace the reckoning for what it is. Another refiner's fire to transmute disbelief into unstoppable self-belief. Another gauntlet to charge through on the way to the summits that stir your spirit and command your valiance for ascension. Yes, you will fall repeatedly on that journey, but if you rise back up hungrier than before, armed with fresh wisdom and finally honed tools for scaling those heights, then there's nowhere you cannot ascend through the sheer force of your determination to keep climbing. This core philosophy, the spiritual certainty that our falls are not the periods but the commas, and the epic stories of our relentless ascension, has become the through line for my life's trajectory. It allowed me to launch from rock bottom towards the exhilarating plateaus of success I've reached, always withstanding the episodic crashes along that journey as mere obstacles to hurdle, never permanent states I would accept. And trust me my friends, this uphill battle never ceases, no matter how high you claim, because with each new summit transcended, your perspective shifts to see new peaks on the horizon. The self-imposed limitations fall away once again. You realize you were never really scratching the surface of what's achievable. What glories of self-actualization await through more upward spirals of effort and ascendancy. So you rest, recover, build, then set out for those next elevations, bolstered by the compounding experience of previously falling and rising, of gathering more wisdom and expanding your climbing skill set with each passing test of resilience. And as the climbs intensify, so does your spirit for confronting them. The bigger the temporary plunge back towards rock bottom, 
the more emboldening the next rebirth and return to chasing summits becomes. You see, after falling repeatedly from such varied heights throughout life's meandering path upwards, I've realized that the falls themselves eventually lost their power to demoralize or stall my forward momentum for long. A certain level of transcendent clarity emerged about their inevitability and ultimately impermanent nature. Yes, the falls would keep coming as part of the cosmic cycle of effort, valleys always preceding those eventual new vistas and zeniths. But the focal point was no longer the transient sting of failure, the passing anguish of unfulfilled potential in those rock-bottom moments. Instead, my mind started bending back towards the attainable summits, always visible through the next rise ahead, provided I adhered to the core ethos of never staying stuck in the fall permanently. This journey of limitless ascent, surges and pitfalls woven inextricably together, became a joyous embrace of the human condition, rather than something to lament. Why rue the falls when they are the requisite admission fee for scaling those rewarding heights that stir your soul? Instead of catastrophizing falters along the way, I started cherishing them as pangs of life's fullest expression, proof that the upward climbs were daring enough to warrant the risks of temporary crashes. With this profound paradigm shift, my ambition only blazed more ferociously. Instead of fearing the inevitable obstacles that awaited on future inclines, I excitedly anticipated those character-forging tests, those inevitable reckonings and falls that would reawaken my hunger and augment my climbing capacity yet again. My relentless spirit welcomed each fresh tumble as an invitation to scorch remaining self-doubts and restraints, to hollow out more space for the unbridled fire of determination that had risen me up from every previous collapse, because somewhere along this serpentine journey towards scaling my most cherished life summits, I had passed through an ineffable inner initiation, a transcendent fortifying of mindset that could no longer be shaken by any failure or fall, no matter how deep the depths explored. An alchemical renaissance emerged where the sting of any defeat was instantly recontextualized as a temporary stumble, eventually propelling me further upwards. A hardening of certainties. These that transmuted life's gravity-bound forces into fuel for my lift towards higher plateaus of actualization. In essence, I have evolved beyond the need to fear the obstacles inherent to all worthy climbs. I embrace them, praise them even, as inevitable portals to unlocking newfound reserves of courage, creativity, and self-belief within me. Any lingering seeds of doubt became impossible to nurture under the scorching heat of my accumulated wisdom about the epic cycles of rising and falling, only to rise again, wiser, more capable, hungrier than previously imagined. And in walking this path of welcoming any test the universe could dish out, of cheekily chuckling at temporary detours and pitfalls, I experienced the ultimate glory awaiting those who steadfastly cling to climbing. Because every fall, regardless of severity or recovery period required, was being revealed as part of a sacred upward spiraling and infinite game, where the only way to exit is to stop. So I played on, undeterred, no matter how dizzying or devastating the craters into which I temporarily plunge. Adamant that any delay or darkness was impermanent, so long as I remained committed to rising and recommitting to the climbs that enduringly set my soul ablaze. Perhaps it appeared outwardly like I was trapped in quicksand, or hopelessly lost in life's labyrinthine corridors. But I understood at the deepest level, that to embrace the magnitude of any summit, is to honor the magnitude of valleys experienced when inevitably falling from previous zeniths. The irrevocable truth is that pain mirrors the potential for equal portions of joy should we possess the courageous heart to keep ascending in the wake of any free fall from great heights. Those who avoid pain ultimately avoid experiencing the full spectrum of their capabilities on this heroic human journey. Anything worth achieving bears the risk of falling, of skinning your knees and drawing blood on the arduous switchbacking trails. So if your ultimate dream is genuinely titanic, worthy of a mythological climber, then expect Homeric tumbles along that mountain path you've chosen to conquer. Understand that the vastness of the space to summit will one day involve crevasse plunging falls that could easily break your spirit, if you have not already woven the philosophical hardness to welcome each collapse as a temporary reunion with Mother Earth, that you might become more resourceful and ferocious in your next cycle of ascendancy. Simply resolving ahead of time that you will fall repeatedly, often at times when it seems unthinkable you could rise again, this decision alone bestows upon you an unshakable edge over any adversity. Because you expect to fall or prepare for the refiner's fires that burn away residual disbelief with each successive up-and-down cycle required to attain further elevations. 
Even if you sustain trauma or hit plateaus where progress grinds to a temporary halt, your determination is never extinguished. Your optimism towards the next climb remains irrepressible, steadfast in the transcendent belief forged over past upheavals that this too shall pass, and the climb shall resume, perhaps in unexpected ways. This indefatigable spirit is what forever separates those who dream of greatness from those who experience it. The dreamers envision the summits while hoping to somehow avoid the pitfalls that block their path. But those destined to reach those eternal vistas, understand that the falls are not obstacles, but the consecrating blessings that ensure only the most determined souls ascend those final peaks. Ecstasy Every grand titan that you admire for the heights they attained, the icons and legends revered for achievements that bend the limits of human potential and make a dent on history itself. Understand that their magnificence was not born in perpetual, unbridled triumph. No. Their glory lives through the scars and bruises earned surviving each harrowing fall from grace, only to rise again and continue upwards through pure force of spirit. Anytime you find yourself paralyzed by setbacks or convinced that a plummet has been too devastating to rebound from, look at the lives and stories of those inspirational climbing souls. Study how every personal and professional icon worth studying fell repeatedly on their path to immortal achievements. Each underwent cycles of rising and falling, of facing fallow periods and lost progress, only to summon the grit to emerge more tenacious and creatively resourceful in their next ascension phase. And know that you possess this same divine upward spirit coded into your soul's DNA. You are a climbing being by virtue of your very existence in this realm of duality, of constant flux. The fire of ascent burns in you, tempered and refined for greater feats through each inevitable fall to come. All that is required is your steadfast decision to join the ranks of those spiritual mountaineers who forever rise back up. No matter how many times life's initiations knock them bluntly towards the terror below, we gather here today as seekers on this journey of human actualization, each striving towards our unique personal summits and highest idealized self-expression. But the journey will never be an unbroken line of perpetually ascending slope graphs. It will look like a volatile sine curve, jagged with unexpected surges and brutal spirit-testing plunges that will require you to summon your deepest resolve many times. And that is as it should be because it is exactly those episodic falls those spells of despair and self-doubt in the proverbial abyss that alchemize your character into the mythic state required for achievement beyond the ordinary. Each rise from the ashes remakes you into something more resilient, more wise, more obsessively hungry for that final summit than before. Until eventually, through every iteration of the cycle, your spirit becomes unbreakable, permanently blazing source of certainty. Focus solely on how to continue ascending, fall after fall if required. After decades navigating this spiraling continuum of rising and falling throughout multiple lives across different spheres, career, finance, family, health, spirituality, and beyond, I have reached a point of supreme equipoise. I accept the inevitability of falls, because I have become intimately familiar with the ferocious rebirth they catalyze. I welcome the tests, because I exult in shedding the final remaining traces of disbelief about manifesting the wildest dreams I set for myself. The very fact that I stand before you today in the golden era of my life's journey thus far, having crystallized so much compound prosperity and multifaceted success in all key areas, is a testament to the power of this philosophy about adversity. I've risen from ground zeroes so wretched, so devoid of light that most would surrender and accept a dimly lit existence fated for mediocrity. But with each successive fall, no matter how crushing or interminably dark the immediate aftermath felt, I regained my footing through remembering a simple truth. I was born to do great things, to transcend adversities and scale the heights. I have an unlimited spring of perseverance fueling me, and the falls are not the darkness extinguishing my light, but fortifying experiences that burn brighter the flames of determination inside. Every collapse in pursuit of my visions was becoming an opportunity to cultivate more grit, more courage, more resourcefulness for finding better pathways upwards.